Hi everyone, this is Razmei Sinai, aka Badawi, aka Subdub, aka Ladyman, aka the Heretic of Ether. Thanks for returning to part 3 of the Soundboy Death Ray tutorial. I'm going to create a hi-hat as well as add effects and we'll wrap this up and send it off to the, the mines. Okay, so next I'm going to create a hi-hat, a very basic hi-hat. Hi-hats are made from metal, so the waveform I'm going to use is not a sign, it's going to be a noise shape here. So we'll go to noise white. I want to make the envelope very short, like so. Next I'm going to create some MIDI notes just to drop in there so we can hear it. Let's check it out. Okay, similar to in the first tutorial, how I use the repeats in the, with the uh, loop parameter over in uh, operator, I'm going to do the same with the uh, hi-hat so that it can play different rhythms and then I'll assign that to a macro. I'll use beats again, 16th notes, let's check it out. So that's holding 16th notes as long as this here note is that long. And that's enough for the hi-hat, I think. Uh, I'm going to just quickly map the repeats to macro 4, which is where the other repeats were mapped with the uh, kick drum. I'm sorry, well, on top of the kick drum, the second uh, oscillator B as well as oscillator C. Okay, so checking this out, once again, it's way too fast when the knob is at its minimum. So I'm going to go in there and adjust that from 48th notes to 16th notes. Wait a minute, maybe it might be cool to make it go to 16th notes when the knob's to the right. That way the other sound can extend and get slower while the other one gets faster back and forth. So let's try that out. So I'm going to invert the range and I'm going to change the minimum to around... We'll try that. I'm going to create some polyrhythms, so 3 over 4s can add some nice effects. Here we go. Let's check it out. Cool. So, so the rhythm's kind of changing. The hi-hat goes fast when the other one goes slow and then vice versa. I wouldn't say slow. I'm saying like half, half time, double time. Okay, here we go. Next, let's get into some effects. I never use effects directly on the tracks. I always use returns, and there's several reasons why. The first one is because it's professional. The second reason is because it's professional. And the third reason is because it sounds better. And the fourth reason is because it sounds better. And the fifth reason is because it sounds better. Okay, well, I'll show you why. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is open up the return area. And you, say, you see it says drop audio effects here. So I will do that. Whatever you say, man. Okay, I'll do that, man. I'm going to drop it there. Okay, first thing I'm going to do is grab an EQ because I want to EQ the input to the return. A lot of problems happen when you drop a reverb on top of something that has sub frequencies in it and then you you got splash and sub all over the place and you're going to mess up your mix. So you want to EQ the input of the return, that way you can remove the low end from the return and then keep the sub in the dry actual, the track that actually has the sub bass frequencies in it dry. And that's really important because you want the bass focused. You don't want it washed out. And then it's not going to really sound as ill as you would like it to sound. So I'm going to go into the EQ real quick. I'm going to remove the low end. I'll have a tutorial about this, about uh, creating really good uh, return tracks for effects. I'm just going to boost it up a little bit in the mid-range there so it, it has a different color than the actual original signal. A lot of analog reverbs and stuff like that, they change the color of the input. You know, if I put a delay there, it's not going to sound exactly like the input delaying. I want it to change color slightly so the EQ can actually do the trick for you. Now let's grab a reverb. I'll just drag that puppy over there. Okay, so first thing I want to do is make that reverb all the way wet so we don't get the dry signal doubled. And I'm just going to run a very simple sound at first, just to get the sound of the reverb right. So let me uh, mute the uh, hi-hat, 
I'm just going to work with this operator, the uh, kick drum. In fact, let me name it so you can know what the hell I'm talking about. Kick drum. Well, let me change that. Soundboy Slugger. And the uh, hi hat I will call Soundboy Toothbrush. Got it. He's going to go to the dentist. All right, here we go. Now, over in the sends, which I have to click over here to show you those parameters, we bring up the send for the first sound in the chain. Next, I want a solo of the reverb and quickly sculpt the reverb till it sounds the way I want. That ought to do it. Next, I'm going to create a delay. Same exact process. Throw an EQ8. I'm going to use a simple delay. I prefer a simple delay because it. I don't immediately know it's Ableton when I hear it. Ping pong delay, I always know it's Ableton. So, Okay, I'm going to remove all the low end. Boost up the mid-range a bit. Let's check that out. Adjust the swing uh, slightly, just so it's a little bit loose. Just on the right side. Great, so that ought to do it. Let's test this out. Turn these off, check it out. Next, I want to change the delay times and have a knob to do that. I'm going to right click and I'll pick macro 7. So as you can see, it's getting a little out of control, which is exactly how I want it. All the control is going to happen really in the mapping browser. So this is really where I, I make sure that things don't get, I mean, I want things to get out of hand, but I want to be able to know how out of hand it's going to get. In other words, I don't want, I don't want uh, it to get out of hand in like an unprofessional way. So at this point, really all of it happens right here in the uh, mapping browser. As long as you get that all detailed, you can start crisscrossing things and then undoing things and try it again, but things should, should be easily changeable very quickly. I'm definitely trying to make something that will always sound different. If you just change one knob, it's just going to be, it's going to be very hard to get back to that, to that point. That's just how I like it. A lot of old school synths were that way. In fact, I'm going to do something even more insane, which is something I like to do. Now, I don't like looking at all these letters here when I work. LFO rate, at this point, that doesn't really mean anything because I've mapped, I'm going to start mapping all this other stuff to it. So I'm just going to right click and change the color and I'm going to change the name to comma. Next one. Period. Color that one green, it's nice. This one I'm going to name a 
that, and uh, on and on and on. Okay. So I just like to get a little creative there. Um, and this one, I'll put my initials. There we go. Okay, cool. So now that's that's looking more like an instrument to me. Let me uh, change the drum act name to Soundboy Death Ray. Cool. Okay, so quickly I'm gonna just uh, map the sends to different places. I'll map that one there, and I'll map this one there, and then I'll map this one over there, and then this one over there. Okay, sorry I don't have much logic here, but that's just how it's gonna be. Let me go over here and crisscross some stuff. Crisscross applesauce. Uh, we got this one, that's fine. Okay, that's cool. Okay, so now we've mapped all the different parameters, the crisscross, complete madness. Let's see how this works on the stage with this here APC40 controller. Okay. Alright, so that wraps it up for the Soundboy Death Ray. But I think one point I want to make when I was creating this is I'm A, trying to break the DAW, in other words, trying to use it more as a, as a uh, improvisational tool uh, for performance uh, rather than just strictly uh, um, using it just as a looper. As you can see, I was just running one clip of MIDI, so it wasn't really about the MIDI, it was about the mapping that made it 
change as it was going. I could do that with my hands. So uh, in my opinion, electronic music is not so much about notes, but it's about sound. And um, just by running a very simple clip, you can do a lot of other stuff. You, we were changing the rhythms with the repeats. We, we had all this stuff going on right here on the knob. So you, you're basically making music in a much more um, live way uh, right there with your hands. Also, you got a gist of operator. And we only used operator here because I wanted to show uh, the low frequencies it can create as well as the high frequencies that it can create. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. And uh, for more tutorials and to check out our courses, go to dubspot.com. This is Roz Macy and I. Bye bye, Soundboy. <laughs> if you ever want any songs sung that way, just send me an email and I'll take care of it for you. Welcome to Dubspot. We believe in providing you hands-on experience right away. Whether you're completely new to music and want to turn the sounds in your head into a musical reality, or you're an experienced artist looking to refine your skills and add new tools to your arsenal, we're ready to meet you at your level. For students of all ages, all levels, and all styles of music, DubSpot is here to help you achieve your goals. With course offerings both online wherever you are and at our school in the heart of New York City, we are ready to guide you through the next phase of your musical transformation. Whether you want to produce music, DJ, or do both, you've come to the right place. Come explore DubSpot for yourself. Become a part of our community and make music.